Hello, I'm Nancy. I'm sitting here in my yarn shop in Needham, Massachusetts, doing our weekly um, podcast. Hope everybody's had a great week, and some of us are getting ready to go to Vogue Knitting Live in New York, where, of course, I'll go there saying, well, I'm not going to buy anything. I have a whole yarn shop full of yarn, but guaranteed I'll come back with a project or two, um, because I always do. Uh, so if you have nothing to do on Saturday, you can hop on the train or the bus or drive and go um, have a lot of fun. It's, it's quite a crowd that comes to it. It's two floors in the Marriott Marquis um, in uh, Times Square. Um, but it's fun and there's lots of classes and there's still room in classes too, um, apparently, because I got into a lecture um, for Saturday morning. Um, so I'm looking forward to that wanted to talk to you, oh, before I forget, I wanted to thank everybody who came to our amazing sale on um, Sunday. We had our annual um, Super Bowl sale, but this year we did it a week early, and I think that's what we'll do next year is our pre-Super Bowl, we call it our pre-Super Bowl sale. Um, so that gives you time to get projects that you can knit during the Super Bowl, and also you don't have to worry about being at home um, preparing food and wanting to be here, whatever. So that's probably what we'll do. But we had a huge crowd, and I thank everybody who had the patience to stand in line um, to pay. We'll try, maybe we can expedite things a little bit better um, next time or be open for more hours. I'm not sure what, what we'll do. But we appreciate your business, and um, I hope you got some fun projects to work on in the next coming, in the coming months. I finally, um, finished my um, Good Grandpa sweater, which hopefully you can see here, um, <coughs> was a very fun project done in the um, Illimani Amelie, I don't, I'm probably not saying that right, yarn, and it's a mixture, I think, of alpaca, mohair, and um, uh, not mohair, silk, and um, some merino. I'd have to get out and look at and see exactly what it is, but um, last week I talked about, or last time we met, I think I talked about picking up for the sleeves, um, I believe, but I wanted to talk about um, picking up for the um, band, because this is the neck band, and you, the instructions tell you to pick up um, for one stitch per row. Now, um, I started thinking about that, and I thought about, usually when you're picking up stitches on a, vertically on stockinette, your instructions are often to um, pick up five, skip one, or pick up three, skip one, because um, row gauges are different from, and if you've ever looked on a pattern that, where it tells you row gauge, and um, stitch gauge, they're different. Row gauges, you get more stitches per inch than you do um, on a stitch gauge. So I began thinking about it and thinking I didn't want, I was worried if I picked up one stitch per row, which, let me see if I'm, see if I'm thinking this, one stitch, yes, per row going across, that this might become kind of wavy or too big for it. So what I did was um, three stitches and skip one. So I picked up three and skip one. You could find a different formula. What I would recommend if you're doing this is to um, do some of it at the, you know, at, you start here at the bottom and then see how you like the way it looks. Um, unfortunately, you can't really tell until you've knit several rows. But if you knit it and it does seem like I'm satisfied with how this um, lays on this, looks like it fits. You don't want it to pull, so that would be not picking up enough stitches, and you don't want it to ripple, and that would be um, picking up too many. So you have to kind of fool around with it. I found three to one kind of worked for me. 
When you get to the back, here's where you will want to do one stitch. It's going to be stitch for stitch, because here you're not doing rows, you're doing the stitches because at the it's at the end of a row. So across the back, you are going to do one for one. Um, anybody has a, if you're doing this sweater and you have a question, feel free um, to come in and um, talk to me about it because I'm happy to share it with you. Um, it was a really lovely, knit, fun, fast knit. I was on a size 10 needle, and the pattern called for uh, three buttons, but I made my sweater longer than the pattern. So when I um, went to pick before I did the band, and I recommend you do it before you do the band, look and see where those, the, um, the button should come, this is where the v-neck, where it stops being straight and then it goes in like this. Um, so it's right about in here where that button ought to go. Well, when I put down three buttons, it just didn't look right. So I ended up having to do four. So you're going to need to know that before you do the band, the button band, because of course you're going to be putting in buttonholes. And I did this according to the pattern because I was going to have this as a sample in the shop. But I was not pleased with my buttonholes. And I recommend, if you're doing any buttonhole, look up on um, YouTube how to do a one row buttonhole. Um, Sally Melville, who some of you may remember, she's written some books, and she has a wonderful book called The Knit Stitch. She did one called The Knit Stitch and The Pearl Stitch. And she has, I believe, believe it's in The Knit Stitch book, she has a one row buttonhole that I think is fabulous. Um, so I would do that um, rather than uh, do the, the old, you know, knit two together, knit two together, and then on the, the coming back on the in that same spot you cast on two stitches. I don't like, and I won't show you because I was didn't really, I wasn't pleased with it. Um, so that's my recommendation. So I hope you'll um, find it fun to do. I have a picture. Oh, I did have a picture of the pattern, but now I don't. Anyway, it's called Good Grandpa Sweater. Here are some choices that we have in the Illimani, and it's Mulberry Silk, Baby Alpaca, and Merino. And the combination of those three um, fibers put together is just, I think, to die for. And Raman's bring some others. And you've seen this before because we've done other things in it. There's a beautiful navy blue and this sort of brick color. I don't know what they, they call it, copper. And this one is charcoal, I believe. So lots of choices, and we have certainly other patterns for this. This knits at um, 15 to 16 stitches over 4 inches. So there are a lot of patterns that it will, will go for. Um, let's see, what else? I'm wearing, this is called Sorgen Fry Jacket, and it's by Indie Bloomst, I-N-D-I-B-L-O-M-S-T. She has fantastic patterns, and I think she has a version of, version of this for a child. Um, and so it's a, car it's a cardigan, and you can see um, what I've done. The gauge is 21 um, stitches over 4 inches, um, but so what I did was I put um, a DK warrant yarn, weight yarn, Patagonia, with a silk mohair that we have here in the shop. So that's a, it's a nice pattern for those of you who like a nice buttoned up cardigan. I think it works pretty well. I have one other, um, oh, and here, this is another color in the um, Emily, but I have that for another reason, have it out. Um, have another sample in the shop, and this one is called, this is a quince pattern called State Street Cowl by Pam Allen. And this is a great two skein project on a big needle. We did it on a um, 
15 and a 13. So the 13 is on the ribbing and the 15 is for the body. And it's just a really nice, you can put it down, pull it over your shoulders if you want to be really warm. And, and I should be doing this in front of a mirror because I can't see what I'm doing, but it does go over your shoulders. Or when you get in the car or you get to put, go to put your coat on to go outside, you don't want it over your shoulders because your coat won't, be, won't fit. So then you scrunch it up around your neck. It keeps your neck really warm and you can actually wear it like this. So we did this in um, a yarn we love from Mirasol called Usha. And we have it in several colors. It calls for two skeins. And this one is called White Clouds. This is the sample we did it in called Hydrangea. And we have um, Goldenrod. And we have Cornflower. And we have sage. It's a soft, greeny, bluey color. And this one is copper and emerald. This one I would call deep, deep teal. And then another blue, which is called midnight blue. So those are the calls for two skeins. Easy project. Um, and that's all I have to say about that. So that's a great um, quick winter project. We still, I don't know, we haven't had much winter here, which makes me sad. Not that I love, love winter. I get kind of cold in winter, but I would love to have loved to see a little snow would have made me happy. So I have something I wanted to show you. We've shown this hat before. It's called the Snowflake Hat, and it's done with um, snowflake yarn, the Lang so snowflake yarn, which is this. And it makes this beautiful pattern. Makes you look, as somebody, a couple people quoted me, makes you look like a genius. Um, which is, there's nothing wrong with that. So we have some colors. I think there might even be a gray and white. But what we did differently on this, this was the hat, the pattern, the snowflake pattern. But we took the Amelie and put it on the rib and made the pom-pom in that. And I just love that. I'm, that hat's going right home to me after a period of time. Because I just, and you know, we all kind of ignored, everybody was doing these colors and nobody was doing these. I had tons of these downstairs. And a customer did, well, one of my students in my class did this. And I thought, wow, that is clever. And I really love it. And I love, love this color. I think it just looks great. So that's the pattern is called Snowflake. The yarn is Snowflake and Emily. So that's another variation on a theme. Another thing we have in the shop, and this is going to be probably kind of funny, is the Sweater Care Pop-Up Dryer. And I use this all the time. So I'm going to see if I can get it out of here without destroying the package. Probably I won't. Nope. There we go. And I will show you how this works. So it has caution. Item under spring pressure. Keep item away from children. No end face while opening. Okay. So you'll see this and it's going to pop open. <laughs> Robin jumped a mile. And um, you can use it flat like this. I have it on my my um, bathtub. And I could have done it flat, but I, for some reason I don't. So it has these guys that you can have it bend any way you want. So your piece can sort of fold over, or lie on top of it that way. But as I see it open, I may undo my, and you can adjust these to any length you want. So you can put your piece over that. I don't like it this tight because it has kind of a ripple in it. So I would change this 
which you can easily do. But I find that, um, you know, when I wash my sweaters, and even if I'm blocking them, you could pin it a little bit if you wanted. Um, you could stick pins in this. The wonderful thing about this is that it, the air gets to it from the top and the bottom, and most things dry overnight. I still don't like the way I've done that. In any case, we'll do it like this. So, it, this does flatten out, and I think it's just genius for, um, and you've probably seen these in other places, but Coco Knits makes this, and um, it fits in my bathtub, and so this, I put this on the other edge on the far side of the bathtub and this uh, in front of me and it just sits there nicely so um i put mine over a drying rack oh robin puts hers over a drying rack it fit on my bed. It's too small for me. yeah so anyway um i love it and it's a good good little thing coco knits comes up with the most clever items so that's that and then lastly I, someone sent me the link to this article, and many of you probably saw it. It was in the New York Times Opinion page on January 30th. And it was, it's an article, or an editorial, from Peggy Orenstein, who is a writer. And um, it's called The Revolutionary Power of a Skein of Yarn. So she starts out by talking about, um, and I won't read it to you, other than it talks about Michelle Obama and people in the past, and it's just um, a great thing to talk about knitting. So I rec it's recommended reading. Then I came across her book. So she's just written a book, and just was published this year, called Unraveling, What I Learned About Life While Shearing Sheep, Dying Wool, and Making the World's Ugliest Sweater. Again, by Peggy Orenstein. I'll just read you a snippet of the um, of the inside cover, so this can inspire you to read it. It's beautifully written. In this lively, funny memoir, Peggy Orenstein sets out to make a sweater from scratch. Shearing, spinning, dyeing wool, and in the process, discovers how we find our deepest selves through craft. Orenstein spins a yarn that will appeal to everyone. So. Um, I recommend this. It's just really nice reading, and um, she talks about sheep in funny ways. Um, somebody, uh, Juliana Margulies, who's an actress, writes, Unraveling is a delight, a meditation on life, and how if a misstep or a stitch, if we misstep or a stitch, our lives, our sweaters can unravel at record speed. Funny, moving, and brilliantly written, and researched. I will never look at a sheep again without a sense of wonder and awe. And you can see on the back, this must be her world's ugliest sweater. But anyway, she talks, it's, it's funny because she talks about the sheep, how they're so slippery and oily because of the lanolin. And she talks about um, sheep shears from all over the world and how there is, there are not as many as um, are needed actually for the number of sheep that need to get shorn. And she also talks about how there are people who uh, disagree with um, sheep being shorn, but they do have to be. Um, and I think I talked about, um, now I forget his name, the sheep who was, um, had ended up with 60 pounds of wool on him, he hadn't been shorn, poor thing. Um, I think what um, people don't like is that there's something called musling, and you can read about it here, where they, um, I think they trim the skin or the hair so the hair won't grow around their backside because they can get something called fly strike, which is deadly to um, sheep. They also, some there's some criticism of how badly handled the sheep are, um, I don't know how true that is, but it's like in any industry there are, you know, missteps and things that people don't do right. Um, I think they try to do, because there aren't enough sheep shears, they try to do these pretty fast. So
so they have a way of doing it pretty quickly and there are contests apparently um, for sheep shears to see who does it the, the fastest um, that said I've seen a lot shorn uh, a lot of sheep being shorn they don't look like they suffer um, they kind of are they're used to it they're kind of docile um, but she said they can kick and um, <laughs> if they're unhappy uh, so anyway I recommend reading this it's a lovely book and that may be all I have to say for today um, it's a beautiful well it started out as a beautiful winter day to here um, but I think we may get a little rain in a little while it's what are we filming on Thursday February 9th so this will come out on Saturday I believe and um, so grab a cup of coffee and watch our video I wish you a happy week of knitting and we'll see you next time take care bye bye